Romantic Jam <laughs> Hello, welcome to Anthony's TV. My name is Jack Duxbury. He is D Bingers, and he is Dave. Recently married. Congratulations! <laughs> right, end of the day. We we were going to do some other videos, uh, but we we're out of time. But we have got a time to maybe. Some of you were asking for some information from Dan's brain. Uh, not so many for my brain, but some people were asking the same thing. Anyway, mm. a lot of guys. We, we had a little discussion what lesson we could do. Now, one of the things is we've spent our life playing with singer-songwriters who play acoustic, right? Yes, that's where I've had most of my crust over the last 15 years or whatever. Right, so in this video, we're going to talk about five things to consider, like mm. five tips, really, for playing piano along with an acoustic guitar player. So let's do it, Dan. Okay, let's do this. Tip one, let the guitar keep time. Or not. Because mm. <laughs> uh, uh, we had a little discussion about this, right? Yeah, uh, it's essentially one of the instruments should be sort of, you know, you know, like particularly if said singer songwriter artist is 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 the guitar player or the piano player and they're singing, they, you know, they they need to be the one that's leading and you need to be an accompanist and sensitive to that to their timing um, is the thing. So one of the two should be uh, the timekeeper rather than both vying for the time and that's when it all starts to sort of fall apart in, in my experience definitely and when i hear guys and i can hear maybe they're not experienced or no one's told them off often the left hand you know they're trying to keep a pulse with the left yeah. hand and be like no i play rhythm yeah no you, you don't you don't want to force especially if it's an artist and you're being employed to back them you know you don't want to try and force them into it because that's when they're going to feel less comfortable and there's a backbeat here Mm. Oh, often when we're strumming, mm. um, maybe not with me, but there's a, there's a strumming thing that is rhythmical. And we'll demonstrate. So we're, we're going to keep in the key of C and notice as well, we've got other videos where I explain how to get into like, some of the shapes we use. Hopefully in the future, I'll convince you to do some more lessons. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's do this. We're in the key of C and I'm going to keep time on this one. Okay, three, four. So what were you doing there? Um, really, I was just um, hitting a chord on the one of each on the one of each uh, bar, or you know, for, for, when, for every time that you hit a chord. So I was just, just really simple voices. So I was just hitting those on the ones of, uh, of, of each bar with the odd odd embellishment when I could hear sort of like, but you know, it's it's not anything too intrusive like. Grace note, mm. do you know what I mean? And if you're new to piano, the way Dan's, he's sustaining it using the foot pedal. Mm -hmm. And I implore everyone, if you've got a sustain pedal, plug it in. And once you put the foot down on that one, that can sustain it for the whole bar. It's a really nice way to do it. Let's mm. do another example where maybe, uh, maybe the singer, I met you in the dark, or the guitar player isn't keeping time. That's what I said, or maybe not. Mm -hmm. So if you pulsed it out, and I'll be more of the airy fairy finger pickery dude. Cool. Okay. One, two, three, four. Thank you. 
beautifully done. Some dodgy stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Same here. And so you're carrying the rhythm there. Mm -hmm. How did you change your approach? I changed my approach um, for, for that kind of thing. I mean, when things get more rhythmic, you know, you can you can generally, you know, like I don't know. There's all sorts of styles that you might be doing with more of your left hand, but generally, I um, my left hand I sort of kept the same, where I'm just sustaining um, sustaining octaves or fifths in my in my left hand on mm -hmm. the bass, but in my right hand I'm I'm, I'm offering up a rhythm. Very similar to the um, to the singer, you know, the classic singer songwriter style guitar rhythm um, that you would do. You're I'm thinking a strumming it. pattern. Yeah, essentially, yeah, for that kind of thing, you know. Wicked. But that's that's the first bit. Who keeps time and thinking about it, uh, making mm. a decision? Nice one, Dan. Let's go on nice. to tip two. Beautiful. Tip two, we're going to call voicings again. Think about this. The voicings. Uh, let's do. Uh, well, I don't need to play it again. Actually, let's play it again. Come on. Okay. Three, four. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do because you're going to get really bored of this. But uh, there, what I did was, and what I think we should think about with voicings, is that I'm parking my pinky, like a lot of guys do. I've got this capo on, and if I play the guitar on its own, listen to how there's a constant note there. Now you hear that, Dan? What mm. do you think? Um, well, that sort of you, there's almost no point me doing exactly the same thing in that instance when the guitar player is holding down that thing where there's a you know there's a there's a continuous note. It gives me more of a license um, to potentially move my voicings around, maybe to follow the vocal better, or to stay out of the range of that, for example, because that. That's constant on yours, so I, I might I might do my voicings, you know, stay out of the way of that, because it's already being occupied. Great, so you get the idea there. Mm. And a little bonus tip: listen to how Dan flams. It's such an important bit. Well, maybe we'll do that as a, a we'll talk about bonus it at the, tip end. at the end. Bonus tip at the end. Squib, squib. We talk about it all the time. Right, okay, so I'm now not going to part my pinky. And let's listen to what Dan plays, okay? Three, four. doing there? Um, different from Jack's, I held a G on the, the top of all of my chords, so... Sound, it sounds beautiful. I, I, I use this tip so much. My pinky finger is often on the same note pretty much the entire time I'm playing the song. And Once everything... he's inserted the pinky, it's not coming yeah, out. Yeah, it's not coming out. Like that, that's large and that's almost like often just that's the highest, you know, like pedal notes I think sounds great, especially in this setting, piano and guitar, singer song, you know, either one of you doing it. But yeah, I just sort of occupied the G the whole time with my pinky. It works I, over all of the chords. Yeah. Again, it's the same, similar decision. If I'm not doing it, you're doing it. Mm. Uh, but just don't do the same thing. Mm. Simple stuff, but also, uh, it's a bit like the the shape that we talk. Mm. I talk about in my other videos. Mm. That's a great one that I've shown you on how to play C major, where that keeps those pedal tones mm. and the guitar moves it's pretty, around. It's pretty much that. Actually. Yeah, pretty similar. Exactly there. Okay, yeah. great. Tip two. Tip nice. three. Should we do a backhanded high five? I don't know why we did. <laughs> Tip three: embellishments. 
and this one you're going to need some vocals and who better to drop them in than me i'm going to do uh let's just go for it three four I just ad lived in it. It came out being really nice. I, love I nearly it. cried. And I spoke about your team, so it's cool. <laughs> hey, on that bit, I'm singing, and you don't even know what I'm supposed to be. I don't know what I'm singing. What were you listening for then? Sort of gaps and uh, gaps, moments where uh, gaps in the vocal are quite often the time when embellishments are the most appropriate. Or if you hear a vocal line that you feel like you can go with, or, you know, that's what, what I was sort of thinking, but, you know, Quite often you'd leave a gap and then I'd put the embellishment in and sort of ease back into just the chords when you're back in. Just so, you know, just finding your space for embellishments is my, is my tip there. Really quick one and you nailed it. It's l listen for the space or if you know the melody, mm. then that's probably the only time that I'd play an embellishment when the... Mm. Uh, Drew was always great. It, you're, check out the videos of Dan with James Arthur doing Say You Won't Let Go. You'd always nail it when in the chorus that was a way to make the chorus feel more of a chorus wasn't it was mm. to go put his melody mm. in there and uh, just another quick tip is that you know you know quite often a singer um you know uh, good ones will um they'll, they'll do it slightly different every time so it's still very crucial to sort of listen out for um for when the space is up. yeah they'll try to catch you out yeah yeah, yeah they will try yeah. uh, they'll tell you off after yeah they will right elbows on to tip four. Okay, tip four, passing tones. I'm going to be the ignorant guitar player. I'm just going to hammer out and play what I normally play. Listen to what Dan does, okay? Three, four. crowbarred in there and that's the name of the game right crowbarring it in and what did you crowbar in um okay there's, there's several you can do but the ones that i felt appropriate you know because a lot of them are just i mean they're rarely appropriate um anyway but um in in with this kind of song this kind of chord sequence i, I just went so uh, you've got your c first note of the song and your g over b and then i went to a um, so, you know, an A flat, you could either do like a diminished or I do, I did like an E over, an E over A flat before I go to the A minor. It leads nicely to the A minor. And the only other one I uh, crowbarred in with, oh, and then, uh, I, so to carry on from that, so I went, oh, sorry. Uh, and then another time I went, I just crowbarred in a little C over G before the F. Re you know, it, this, that's not, you know, um, you know, that's all within the key. So that's, they're, they're quite, they're quite um, you, can, you can throw them in more, um, you know, freely because it's, you know, it's not sort of out of the ordinary. Um, the only other all out of the ordinary one I did. Um, you hear that quite a lot. That's, that's quite. Um, it's a slightly jazzier, more sort of maybe gospely one. And all I did there is bef after the A, a minor, before I went to the F, I, I stuck in a G minor, um, which just you know, uh, yeah, just to know that's slightly a jazzier, more fruity passing tone, but it sounds good to me. And. All of those things you can slow down on YouTube and check it out, if, mm. uh, which I do all the time with Dan. Just slow down his videos and check it out. But just to let you know, if you're a beginner out there, a passing tone, the way we're thinking is that I'm playing a, a very rigid chord sequence. Mm. Um, and what Dan is doing, he's put inserting chords that I'm not playing in and around those chords that's why they're called passing tones from one chord to another and 
the main goal is to kind of feel some form of magnetism so to mm. amplify the change because these are simple it could also be used because you're in the third verse and things are a mm. bit boring often it's the placement of these in the arrangement it, it helps with tension and release creates more drama yeah um you know it's, it's, you know they, they're good for that and like you say you know further in the song when things are kicking off a bit more and you, you know like just to just to sort of you know spice things up a little bit. And go gospel music is a great place to go if you don't listen to it. L look up gospel passing tones mm. uh, using the two five one. We'll probably do a video on that because there was a bit of a two five one. We don't want to get mm. too deep, but go look into passing tones. And this brings us to our last and final tip. Mm -hmm. Let's do a floppy handed high five. <laughs> <laughs> tip five, three, four. of the show where we talk to you and pretend like we care that we care about you or your lives but we don't we just want your money and we're bored of playing this song and here we go good night everybody <laughs> Tip five is dynamics. Um, yeah, probably the when, most important. <laughs> yeah, very much, the, very much the most important thing. You'll notice that probably quite badly <laughs> there, but we uh, um, we went from a loud section um, into where we brought it down. Uh, this will generally be like you know quite a lot of the time just in the verse when the singer starts to sing. You can't keep everything at one to set, you know high voltage. You've got to bring it down and be sensitive to the things that are going on. Um, particularly vocals or strings if you're playing with a string but you know just generally all the time your dynamics have got to be you know um, suit in the song you've got to be listening and working out when you're able to play loud soft bringing it in and out crescendos and all that kind of stuff you know very important and with less people so if you're not in a band and it's a duo like this it means the world and when we've rehearsed these things before and we go out and sometimes we've done duos to a lot of people uh, and one of the few ways you can kind of imbue yourself with some confidence is to know the path of the dy dynamics. Mm. So yes, a lot might not be happening musically and you're thinking, oh, are we really going to, you know, say you've got a big gig coming up or a big video you want to record. I'm telling you, if you can be sure on the dynamics and be mm. together in it, like mm. even there, we just communicated mm. through eyes and, and just, um, it's better to have it mapped out in your, in your brain. And, uh, well, d d dynamics can also make something that's very simple like this four chord sequence sound a lot more um, we could end the show on that expansive than it than it is because of you know dynamics are very important very important and let's do uh, our bonus tip which is uh, you hear them do it all the time which is planning and uh, i call it a squib squib i've done a video on this uh, but just a quick one uh, dan like when you go around these chords what flams can you do on each chord um, you can do quite a few. It's, it's very similar to, um, I've sort of learned, you know, it's, it, 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 it was, I guess, probably initially to, you know, like copy guitar players, because it's like the same with a hammer on. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm you know, it's, you're in C major, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite often doing it. Um, so there's one flam. Yeah, like the, the D to E with, the, with these two fingers, keep, keeping, you know, I mean, the, the, you know. There's two positions. Uh, Watch my video on Squib Squibs. Yeah. Um, but it, we won't go into too much of it, but listen, it's the placement, right? Mm -hmm. It's that you're mixing it up, even when I'm playing along with him. 
sometimes you'll just think, hang on, this is, we've gone round it. You've been disciplined maybe the first few, mm. and then you'd want to introduce something different. Mm. And a flam is a great way on the piano to not screw with the guitar player. And Correct. then also not play a melody. It's a good in-between ground. So let's just do a flam one, and we'll play us out with some flamming. Okay. And uh, yeah, great. I hope this helped anyone. Thanks for watching. If, if, it, uh, if you like what we're doing, consider subscribing. If you don't, let us know. We learn from the hate. Mm -hmm. And we're going to play you out. I'll tell you what, should we... Uh... No, we'll stay in the same key. Three, four... <laughs> Dan, or you. <laughs> That'll do, that was nice. Most tasteful outro you can play, nothing. No. Oh yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs>